Hello everyone, welcome to my new video. In this video, we're gonna focus on another great feature in the Kukam AK firmware upgrade lately. Uh, this is uh, the Super ADR. The Super ADR is a very great feature and could help you deliver super high quality photos directly from the camera. And in this video, I'm gonna dive very deep into this feature and share with you from the workflow, the technique styles, and some tips and tricks. My name is Yu Xun Guo. I am a 360 photography maniac. And on my YouTube channel, you can learn something about 360 photography and master your one-shot 360 camera like never before. Agenda for today is uh, also not very complicated. So the first I'm gonna share with you some result you can achieve after this video tutorial. So what you could get after this video is very easy, but result will be very stunning. The second is we're gonna have the previously on Express DNG8 because the Super IDR works on the basis of Express DNG8, which is another great feature on this firmware upgrade. And we have already mentioned this feature in our previous tutorial. Next one is I will explain every detail, especially on the technical side of the Super HDR. So why it is called Super HDR? So even Google, the very big company, they call it HDR Plus. But for Kandao, the small company, they call their HDR Super HDR. What is the meaning of the Super? I'm going to help you explain the secret behind the words Super. And I'll give you some live demo from the conventional workflow to the high quality desktop level professional workflow. And finally, give you some summary and for the future predictions. What you could achieve after this tutorial, you can get imaging quality like this. You can get such quality with your Kugam AK and your virtual toy clients. We're gonna have a review on Express DNG8 because it's Express DNG8 is very important for you to understand the Super HDR in every detail. So for the Express DNG8, the Kuka Maker will capture eight DNG shots in a burst mode and stack them all together directly in the camera hardware and generate a 16-bit high quality raw data as well as an 8-bit depth high quality JPEG with local term mapping from that 16-bit DNG file. So you will have a very high quality DNG file and a very high quality JPEG file from the Express DNG8, from DNG burst to in-camera stacking and the local term mapping. On the basis of Express DNG8, I can finally tell you what is the Super HDR. Let's make an analyze on the pipeline behind the Super HDR. So first, the camera will capture the Express DNG8 with exposure bracket. The first shot is going to be the EV0 with 8 shots in burst. The next, next step is the EV-3 with also with 8 shots in burst and stacking the camera hardware. And finally, we have a EV-2 and has also stack and post in the camera. Now after this Express DNG8 bracket exposure, you're going to have three high quality raw data as well as three high quality JPEG file with different exposure settings. And next up, this camera will send this three 8-bit uh, depth JPEG file directly to your phone. And on the phone, the phone hardware will uh, make HDR merge and do some local tone mapping to help you get a very high quality dual fisher image at backstage. And after that, the the phone hardware will help you stitch the dual fisheye image into an equirectangular panorama with in-camera stitch, auto-leveling, and some different operations in the phone hardware. So the final result you get is a, a very amazing quality in-camera JPEG panorama from altogether 24 DNG shot in burst with a very complicated pipeline. But what you need to do is only press the shutter button one time. So this is very interesting. And for the pipeline, the overview about the Super HDR is the Express DNG exporter bracket, a high quality three RAW plus JPEG, and the three JPEG to your phone, and HDR merge, local tone mapping, stage, auto leveling, different, everything else 
was complete automatically done in the camera hardware and your phone hardware. So next up, you will have a high quality panorama you can share with your friends on Facebook or some other platform. The workflow is very easy. Press the shutter button, wait for a few seconds, and share high quality image with your friends. It's done, right? It's very easy. And so what does super means, right? Why it, we call it super ADR? Because the super is an, not an ordinary word in English. So what does super mean? Okay, let's make an analyze about the super ADR. Now first, we can see that the camera will shot exposure bracket in Express DNG8 mode. That is very interesting and very important for you to achieve super high imaging quality. Next, to every image stack in raw data will happen in camera and the, the stacking efficiency will be very high. We have a benchmark test about the previous Xperia DNG8. With the internal storage, we only have eight seconds to stack all the eight files into a high quality raw plus JPEG. So the in-camera stack with high efficiency and the online HDR merge and tone mapping in your phone hardware. But we still have three extra secret features behind the words super. The number one is the quality oriented exposure criteria. The second is the extended dynamic range by 8 EV. It's a huge improvement on your dynamic range. Next, uh, finally, is that it can increase the signal to noise ratio by a factor of 6.4 at max. For the Cook MAK, the exposure criteria in the camera is very interesting. It's different from other manufacturers. And the Cook MAK will aim at the best possible imaging quality during the exposure measurement. So I call it quality oriented exposure criteria. This is uh, the the blue line we drop as uh, the exposure criteria, exposure curve for the CoolCam, and uh, the yellow one will, will, will show you the ISO, uh, the ISO curve. The dashed line is the CoolCam, the dot line will be the other cameras. So you can see that for the other cameras, once the, the camera measures the settings with a lower exposure time than the 30 second, it will automatically hire this uh, ISO to capture the plenty of light for you uh, to get the result. The increase in ISO will drop the imaging quality and dynamic range a lot. But for the CoolCam, uh, the camera will wait until the shutter speed reach the limit of one second because we know that the CoolCam AK has an upper limit of one second exposure. And after that, it will increase the ISO. So you can see that the exposure criteria is different. The tipping point you can see for the other cameras, the tipping point might be in the in this area. But for the Google MAK, the tipping point will be at the ISO 100 as well as the one second exposure. As we know that the Google MAK also have an in-camera stack in raw data. So with the quality oriented exposure criteria and in-camera stacking, the Google MAK could stack at ISO 100, which means that the sensor size will be bigger mathematically. So for the other cameras, if you still stack with the lowest ISO, so for the uh, signal noise equivalent sensor size, it works like a bigger sensor in these areas. But for the Kukan MAK, this space is way much larger compared with other cameras because of the quality oriented export criteria. Kukan could stack at ISO 100 in most of your situations and increase the signal noise ratio as if you have a larger sensor. It's mathematically. So physically, the sensor size doesn't change. But for the mathematicians, the sensor size just got bigger. So for the Google MAK, it could shot at a mathematically larger sensor in most situations. So that is the very tricky part for the Google MAK with the quality oriented exposure criteria as well as in-camera stacking. The next is the, the Kuga MK could extend by a dynamic range by 8 EV by the Super HDR because with a single DNG shot, we have a dynamic range from the left to the right, as the arrows indicates, right? And with a normal bracket at minus 3, 0, plus 2, we have the such high dynamic range. We can increase the DR by a factor of 5 EV. And don't forget, we still have in-camera stack with 8 shot in burst. So 8 shot in burst stacking camera will 
extend the dynamic range and shadow areas by 3 EV. Altogether, we have 5 plus 3 EV, that is 8 EV improvement in the dynamic range. So that is how I get the number 8 EV by this very simple mathematical calculation. The dynamic range improvement is 8 EV, and for the highlight, you know that for the minus 3, we capture more detail in the highlight. So for the highlight, we have 3 more EV. And for the shadows, not only we have a plus 2, but by stacking with 8 shot in raw mode, we extend the shadow detail by 3 EV. So for the shadow areas, the dynamic range will increase by 5 EV. So why the Google MK could increase the signal noise ratio by a factor of 6.4 max in Super ADR mode? Because in quantum physics, the signal noise ratio will increase by the square root of the photons exactly reach the sensor plane. So by shooting in Super ADR mode, the total photons shot on the sensor plane will increase by uh, 41 times. And with square root of 41, we got 6.4. That is a maximum improvement in theory about the Super ADR. Theoretically, it will not be that high, but the increase for the signal noise ratio is huge if you shoot in Super ADR on the Google Mate K. And don't forget, with the explorer bracket, we can get more detail of the highlight and the shadows, so we can go without any pixel clipping in most of your situations. That is super cool. What does super mean? So apart from the first three features, so the quality oriented explorer criteria, the extended dynamic range by 8 EV, and the increase of the signal noise ratio by a factor of maximum 6.4. What is the benefit of Super if you have such great amount of features of the Super ADR? And you can share high quality panoramas with your friends with a single click on the shutter button and share directly on the Facebook. So sharing high quality panorama is never got easier. And uh, you can get super high quality with a pro level uh, post process, which I will show you later on in my live demo section. And for the exporter bracket, uh, different from the conventional auto exporter bracket, uh, so the Kuga Make has uh, a genius choice by setting the exporter value as minus three, zero, and plus two. That is a very genius choice. After a tons of practical experiment, to finally the engineer choose to set exporter at minus three, zero, and plus two, and that is a killer feature for the virtual tour guides. At the beginning of the tutorial, you can see. That imaging quality is just stunning. How fast is Super IDR? I think that the benchmark test for the Super IDR is very hard. We have altogether 24 explorer time. That is different from uh, one situation to another. Benchmark depends on your situation. And in my live demo section, you will see the total time cost is 52 seconds for one set of Super IDR shot. But for you, if you shoot outside, it will be faster. But if you shoot interior, the time cost may be around 15 seconds. And the workflow is uh, never gone that easier because for the conventional Super IDR workflow, just uh, press the shutter button, the camera will capture the exporter bracket in express DNJ automatically and uh, wireless transfer the high quality JPEG to your phone and HDR merge, local tone mapping, stitch with Google Map. So first step is happening automatically by pressing the shutter button only one time. So the second time we press the button is to share with your friends. So the step one, step two, and you are good to go. It's very easy for the conventional workflow. And for the high quality Super IDR workflow is to make the most of that three 16 bit depth high quality raw data from the exporter bracket Express DNG8 with some professional color grading and professional HDR fusion and a stitch on the Cookham Studio 2.0, uh, you can get very amazing quality. I get my uh, photo with this high quality workflow. And you can share with your friends. Yes, it's just stunning. Let me give you my live demo. So in the first part, I will show you the conventional super HDR workflow. It's super, super, super simple. Click the shutter button, wait, click on the share button, you're good to go. You can see after the firmware upgrade and the app up, upgrade, uh, scroll to the right, you can see a new shooting mode called Super HDR. 
The super UR is quite different from the other uh, manufacturers. It's a totally different HDR solution. Here we can see there are two options. One of them is uh, white balance, and one of them is timer. And after you press the shutter button, it will take three express DNG shot. So I don't want to end the timer. Let's go to the, another room and hide ourselves. Now I'm in another room. Here you can see the live preview of the situation and take the shot. Uh, it will take three set of Express DNG8 and automatically stack in camera generate high quality JPEG after January 3 JPEG and will transfer all the JPEG file to the cell phone and the cell phone will automatically fuse the blend merge into a high quality HDR photo so that is a workflow but everything is happening automatically here you can see the here the shutter sound and the, yeah I gonna see the result very very soon here is uh, yeah you can see it's downloading and after that it will automatically blend and fuse all the photo photos in the app in this menu playback menu you can see the result go to the app menu here you can see the result directly everything generated inside oh this oh this 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 I like the quality. This is amazing. This is amazing. It's quite interesting. It's much better compared with a single shot, and everything is happening automatically. And every single shot was generated with a photo stacking in a camera body. Okay, so that is how I take this single Super HDR shot. For the professional workflow, I'm gonna share with you some other method of performing HDR blending. Okay, now let me show you the high quality workflow behind the Super HDR. These are the files we have captured with the Super HDR shooting mode. These are three high quality 16-bit color depth, high quality DNG file with a prefix of D at the end of the file name because this was a high quality DNG file generated from the Express DNG8 mode. And this is minus three, uh, this is AV0, and this plus two. We have also have three high quality JPEG file uh, with the in camera pipeline. This, uh, you can see that with some color correction and uh, the balance between the highlight and the shadows. And uh, this are the high quality 8 bit depth JPEG file generated directly inside the camera. And if we want to transfer these files in super ADR mode to your cell phone, the cell phone is automatically merge and blend on HDR look 8-bit depth JPEG file uh, from these three files. You can see this is a pretty good result compared with the single shot. You can see the shadows, the highlight have been improved a lot. And after that you can stitch, share, and uh, the cell phone will auto stitch uh, panoramas in equirectangular format for you. And this is the result you will have after you press the Super HDR button on your cell phone and high quality workflow we're gonna have uh, three high quality raw file and right click we open in camera raw and first uh, let me show you a very simple and a very tricky hdr merging in the adobe camera raw because in camera raw or lightroom you don't have to buy third-party software it already have the built-in hdr image generator so select all the files and right click and see uh, merge to hdr right uh, merge HDR and we'll uh, generate a 16-bit float HDR DNG directly from all these files. And after that, you can see that uh, because we have shoot on the tripod, we don't have to click on our line. And if you apply the auto settings, the camera will auto color correct this file for you. That will save you quite a lot of time in post. Uh, so I click on auto and the ghosting I will choose off because there are no motion in this situation and merge and save as an HDR DNG file in your folder. And after that, you will see a new file uh, all together with the three high quality DNG file. But this one is quite different. It is 16 bit, but it is an HDR DNG floating format DNG file. A basic correction, uh, we are not satisfied with the result because you can see the highlight has been overexposed 
and the shadows is also oversaturated. Uh, we can bring back the highlight by uh, push the slider. You can see now we can bring back all the details outside the windows, and we can add a little bit of contrast. Add uh, uh, I don't add too much exposure and uh, to make it uh, sky more blue by color correct the temperature and add some texture to add the sharpness of your image. For the saturation, I'd rather uh, slow down because I don't want to have a overcooked looking from the camera roll. And sometimes I will add some vibrance, but in this situation, I would uh, lower the vibrance a little bit. So this is the result I'm, I'm happy with. And you can see with some simple trick, uh, and have a huge improvement before and after, right? For the optics, uh, I would rather recommend remove chromatic aberration because the, the camera raw or the light room will help you uh, wipe out some of the chromatic aberration. And for the rest, you can different all of them in the QCAM Studio 2.0. And after that, you can uh, save as a JPEG file because for the Photoshop, uh, Nadir patch, for the QCAM Studio, all of them is now only support 8-bit workflow. So uh, we can save as a, a JPEG file and uh, now let's uh, go to this folder and we can find a high quality color correct. This is a DNG file. This is a JPEG file. You can see right. Uh, open this QCAM Studio and drag and drop this file to this Studio software and the software will auto stitch the files for us. But we can make a before and after comparison, right? So you can see the huge improvement before and after. Yeah, and we are, this is what I want to talk to you is the difference. You can choose the different, choose the color correction. Uh, choose the color correction will give you a more natural looking at the stitching line. For the optical flow, you can turn on, off, and uh, compare the stitching result, which one is better. For the graphic, gravity correction, you will correct the horizontal line. You can see uh, you can go back and forth, but I will normally leave as uh, selected. For the your pitch and roll, I would uh, set to maybe 17 and uh, see. I, I want to put the windows on the left and the interior shot on the right. Uh, lucky enough, the QCAM Studio also support batch. So you can uh, post process one of them and select all the files and uh, render and apply all the stitching settings to all the selected files. Click on OK and, and the output an 8K JPEG files. And if you still want to wipe out all the stitching line, you can uh, click on stitch panel. But here, I will directly render all the files and on my computer. And for the HDR Fusion, there's another software uh, that is very good. That is, uh, uh, that is uh, Euro HDR, you can see here. And uh, this is uh, a paid software, and some more capabilities compared with the uh, Adobe Camera Raw in this HDR plugin. And you can also drag and drop directly the raw data inside the Euro HDR. 2019 and uh, this just directly uh, click on the create HDR and this quantum HDR engine will help you generate a very cool result. Let's wait for it and let's see this result before and after. This is uh, this one and this one. You can see that. And for this one, the result is pretty good. And uh, if you still want to make a Nadia patch, you can open up this photo in Photoshop CC and in 3D workspace, we can uh, interactively add it with the Nadia patch. I will show you in this uh, live preview. When you open this uh, photo, uh, you can correct a uh, new layers and uh, open the 3D workspace. Control plus J, uh, the new layer, and click on 3D, spherical panorama, and add a panorama layer. And we will look down, you can see you now can now uh, interact with the canvas uh, like a VR photo. You can see that. And this function is also only support 8-bit depth photo at this moment. And you can see now it's a uh, nadir part. We see some shadows and a tripod. And we can make a rectangle selection and use some lasso tools and uh, make that Nadir patch. This is very easy, right? And click on Patch Tool for s few options. We have, right, you can see the Nadir patch is gone. And we Control plus E merge down into that 3D photo. And we go back to the equirectangular format, duplicate back to the original one, and uh, 
delete the layers, merge down. Uh, this is a photo without any nadir part. And if you look closer at this part, you can also see my tripod in the mirror. You can also select and patch with the shift plus F5 with the content that we are fill, right? So it help you wipe out almost all the reflections. Yes, this is great, and this is a now a very optimized photos. And you can also make some further fine tuning based on the curve, on the, the levels, to make it more vivid. And sometimes I will, uh, sometimes I will correct it a little bit. But for this shot, I think I am uh, still. Uh, satisfied with this result. And so this is the result I will have uh, out from the Photoshop. Uh, merge the layers and save to your disk. And it's done. Let me show you the URHDR. You can see that the quality about the URHDR is another looking. And per personally speaking, sometimes I like the feeling of the URHDR better than the in-camera HDR DNG. Uh, and you can see it has more sliders to play with to bring back the details, add some textures. And this is, you, you can play with the sliders, and after that you can uh, stitch that file directly in QM Studio, and that's, that is also working. And for the stitcher, I know that uh, some of you guys might be a very professional and use the PDG Pro 12. And yes, for the PDG Pro 12, it natively support the QCAM AK stitching because I was uh, working with, uh, used to provide this uh, precise uh, model for the Google Make case, so the used at this model inside the Google Make case. So now the PDG Pro 12 will natively support the Google Make case stitch and at the same time auto leveling. So with this uh, with this JPEG file, we can also drag and drop, and it will automatically recognize the Google Make case and uh, and apply all the settings. You can see it recognizes the Google Make case. Have a very interesting feature called this find optimum themes, right? You can see the stitching line might be more smart. And the, the editing is more user-friendly compared with the Google Studio because the PDG Pro 11 is a paid software and has more advanced features than that one. So without any control points, it's now already stitched. And we can uh, click on the align images and make a better stitch straight out from the PDG Pro 11 without any the stitching Arrows. A stitching line is uh, is done by AI. I think also we will uh, view this uh, shot interactively in the uh, live preview. You can see every detail in this shot. The workflow in the PDG Pro 12 is fully color managed. Okay, so that is all for you to learn about this workflow. For well, personally speaking, if you want to be fast and fluent, you can choose Adobe Camera Raw and work with the Google Studio. But if you have, still want to have more control on your photos, you can choose your HDR to, to the HDR blending and choose the PDG Pro 12 for more professional stitching result. Okay, so that is all for the live demo for the high quality workflow for you to master the Super HDR. Okay, after live demo, let's give you some summary and for the future expectations. So for the summary, we can see that the Super HDR is really a genius the auto explorer bracket with the express DNG8 mode approach. So this is very simple but very cost effective. It improves the imaging quality a lot. And that is a virtual tour killer feature about this the super IDR feature. And it's also a great feature for the entry level for the beginners to enjoy the one shot 360 photography because with only the three high quality 8-bit depth JPEG file, you can still get a very stunning very interesting result directly from your phone platform. And this is really a candle style HDR approach. So this is totally different from any other manufacturers. So it's different from the automatic whisper bracket or it's different from the HDR DNG on Z1. And it's also very different from the Explorer bracket on the DSR. So it's just like uh, Explorer bracket and in-camera stack the same time. So that is really a candle style <laughs> approach. And uh, I also have some future expectations about this great feature because you know that I do care a lot about imaging quality. If you are long being subscribed to my channel, you're gonna learn that I do care so much about imaging quality. If you want to take the most of the Super IDR, the precise exposure measurement, 
is very important. We only have auto control in the Super IDR. Although we know that uh, the Kuka Make has a quality oriented exposure criteria, but for some of the extreme situations, the exposure measurement is just not precise enough. I do hope we can have some EV settings or we have a full manual control about the Super IDR, which will make the result of the Super IDR more stunning. As we know that Yoshi Hirota has developed a very amazing the HDR DNG stacking on the Ricoh C31. And I also that the candle the guys could make a deep investigations about HDR DNG and maybe in the later in the future the Kuka Make could also have the HDR DNG straight out from the camera body because the Kuka Make has a much more powerful platform compared with Z1. Could have adaptive stacking number in the Express DNG8, especially for the EV minus three, because for the highlight areas, the native signal noise ratio is already very high. We don't have to capture eight shots in total. We can lower the numbers, have a four shot or even one shot is good enough for us to capture to bring back the detail at the highlight. And we should rethink the exposure strategy for the Super IDR because, as we have mentioned before. In some very extreme situations, the exposure measurement is just not precise enough. Recognize the scenes with AI or some other uh, strategies. So as long as you can give the users a very precise exposure in auto mode. In this tutorial, we have a talk about the, the previous on the Express DNG8, the every technical detail about the Super IDR, and tips, tricks, live demo about Super IDR. I think you're gonna learn a lot in this video and I do hope you could uh, sum up, subscribe and hit notification bell. In the future, I'm gonna share with you more interesting videos about One Shot 360 photography and One Shot 360 cameras. Guys, see you next time. Bye.